All right, this is lesson 25, the game design process. And the question of the day is, how does having a plan help to make a large project easier? I want you to think about that. So if you click on this Defender Game Project Guide, it'll open a document. And this will guide us through uh, or what the person who created this game, what they were thinking. So describe your game. You are an alien defending your cake from evil ladybugs. Ladybugs march across a bridge towards your cake. You'll need to push the ladybugs off the bridge into the water. To oh, uh, you'll need to do push them into the water. Get points for stopping ladybugs and lose points for letting ladybugs through. So let's look at exercise two. This is the game that that was referring to. And if you use your arrows, you can push these ladybugs into the water. You get points for that. If, if I let one get the cake, I lose points, if you look in this top left corner right here. So, turn to a classmate. If you were making this program, what sprites would you need? What variables would you need? What functions would you use? Let's go over this. What sprites would you need? You need this alien, you need the ladybugs, and you need the cake. Those are sprites, okay? Interactive animations. What variables would you need? Um, score. Uh, I don't think you would need anything else. I can't think of anything other than score. What functions would you use? Um, probably functions to reset the ladybugs, just as we saw in Lesson 24. Uh, reset the ladybugs. Um, probably a function to make the, the main character move. Um, and probably a function to change the score, maybe. That's all I'm seeing. Okay, so let's move on to exercise three. So all exercise three is having us do is looking at the project guide, which I have open right here. Does the project guide describe the same sprites that you thought of? So let's think about the sprites, uh, the alien, the cake, and the ladybugs. That's all I said, and that's all that's here. So let's see what's next. Does it use the same variables to store information? So let me take a look at the variables. Yeah, all I said was score. So that was correct as well. Are the functions that it describes the same as the functions you described? Let's see. I probably didn't get... Okay, so there's a background function. I didn't say that. Enemies touch cake. That sounds like what I was saying. Move player. I said that. Ah, displace enemies. Player pushes the ladybugs. I did not think of that. Enemies touch water. Uh, I didn't think of this either. If either ladybug touches the water, they get reset and the player score is increased. I was just thinking en enemies touch cake and enemies touch water would be the same, but they are not. Um, show score displays the score. I didn't think of that either. So that's what I did not think of. Let's move on to exercise four. Okay, always note when it says this, this icon means that this level is part of a larger project. Changes will be saved across these levels. Just keep that in mind. So exercise four, getting started, set animations. Before you get started, you'll want some better animations for each of your sprites. Do this. In the animation tab, there are animations for each of your sprites. Go look at what they are. In your code, give each sprite its appropriate animation. Use the ones provided for now, but later you will be able to go change them. So, let's see. Okay, and I always like to... to the, so, there's only alien walk right anyway. Uh, we might have to make it look like it's walking left later. So, we got that, we got cake, and we got ladybug. Uh, okay, so we need to... Okay, later we'll change the animation. So let's set the animations using the set animation block, of course. Cake. Cake. Player. And this should be the alien walk right animation. Enemy one and two are going to be ladybug. Yeah. Okay, I had a bit of an interruption, but I'm back, and we are just setting these animations. So, enemy one and enemy two are going to be a ladybug animation, but you've got to name this sprite right here the same as the variable that's above it. And you should know that by now. 
And I don't know why there's no X and Y parameters in here, but we can change that later if we want uh, by clicking that arrow. So I think we have done everything for this level. Okay, cool. So hit next. Exercise five, moving the enemies. You will need to get your enemy sprites to a random position and moving across the screen. Do this. After each enemy sprite is created, set its X position to zero. Set its Y position to be a random number between 150 and 250. Set its X velocity to two. Test your program. Your enemy sprites should now be moving across the bridge. Okay, so guys, if you are trying to learn and do this on your own, I suggest you just go back to lesson 24 and borrow your code, okay? But I'm going to do this here after each enemy. Uh, okay, test your program. Okay, I think we can just create this up here. And I'm pretty sure it can be copied and pasted as well. So, uh, sprite.x sprite dot y and we'll need a random random number in there and I'm not setting anything yet because I'm going to copy and paste and now we're going to need x velocity which is in the sprite drawer uh, I think that's up top though yeah x velocity okay so now we got to do this for both enemies so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these three move my cursor down with my arrow keys and paste them right here. So now I'm going to put in the name of the variable. Okay, and enemy2, 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 and let's see what they are having us do. So x position equals zero, Y position to a random number between 150 and 250. And X velocity to 2. One fifty, two fifty, And now it's saying to run your tester program, your enemy sprites. Yep, they're moving across the bridge. Move on. <laughs> Exercise six is moving left and right. Now you'll just need to get your character moving left and right and changing its animations. Do this inside the move player function. Okay, let's find that and let's let's make this workspace bigger. Uh, move player is the function I am looking for. Okay, move player right there. Use a conditional to detect when the right arrow key is pressed. Okay, so I refer to conditionals as if statements. That's what I like to call them. So I grab the if statement. Uh, if the right arrow is pressed, that's in the world drawer right arrow. Uh, key went down or key down. Uh, I do. Let's do key down. Key down right. If it is, move the player sprite to the right by three. So... What is that? X equals X plus three. I think that's what we're doing. Um, player, yeah, player equals player. But here's the thing: they didn't give us an equal sign right here, or a, a mine, a plus sign right there. So we got to do player dot X equals player dot X plus three. Got to go to text mode, and now I'm going back to block mode. Um, and it says use another conditional to move the player to the left when the left arrow is pressed. Okay, guys. All right, so what we can do is we can copy this, move the cursor beneath this if, if statement, paste it. We're going to change this to left, and we're going to change that plus sign to a minus sign. Okay, easy enough. Let's run this. Okay, so can I move to the right and left? Absolutely. Perfect. So we're done with that. So exercise seven is the same as exercise six. We're just making him move up and down this time. So two more conditionals, 
And instead of messing with the x-axis, we're going to play around with the y-axis. So um, I'm going to copy and paste again and put my cursor beneath there. And we want to change this to, let's say, up. And we're going to go into text mode and we're going to, um, I think up is negative. So I think we're going to keep that and we're just going to change this to a y because it's on the y-axis. Okay, and I could have kept that in text mode, but I didn't. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm pasting this, but I'm going to change this to down, and I'm going to change the, uh, what are the, I, uh, operator. I keep forgetting what those are called. I'm going to change the operator from negative to addition, additive, um, or positive. So, yep, this is working. My up arrow, down arrow, left arrow. So moving on. Okay, this is something that I feel like might be confusing to people. So pay attention. Change player animations. You can change the animation when the player changes direction. Inside the animation tab, copy the animation of your player sprite. Um, and then it says something about flipping each frame. I think when they say copy, I think they mean duplicate. I think, yeah, so let's, instead of alien walk right, we'll call it alien walk left. And then we're going to flip horizontally both of these frames. I think they're called frames. Okay, so now it looks like, yeah, now it looks like he's walking left. And let's make sure that that's what they wanted us to do. Inside the move player function, set the sprite's animation so that the player changes the direction it's facing when the left and right arrows are pressed. Okay, great, I like this. I like to show people this too because this is adding a little bit of um, it makes it a little more realistic so that when you press left he faces left and right he faces right so let's get two set animation blocks and we're going to put them in the key down right if statement and the key down left if statement okay and make sure the sprite says player and we're going to set the animation this is for when we press right, so alien walk right. Okay, same thing down here, but alien walk left. Okay, alien walk left. All right, and I am going to uh, make this, yep, he's facing left and right. And I'm going to end this video here, and I'll make another one for the rest of the level, or the rest of the lesson.